Well, it's been a hell of a week and a week from hell for the government. Justice Minister Kitty Allen arrested and charged after she crashed her ministerial car on Sunday night. So we end the week with another minister gone from Cabinet, but precious few details about exactly what happened. From the Prime Minister, we know that Kitty Allen was experiencing extreme emotional distress. It appears that some of her personal struggles came to a head yesterday and uh, were contributing factors in this incident. Driving on Evans Bay Parade on Sunday around 9pm, Kitty Allen crashed her ministerial car into a parked ute. And she appears to have hit the side of the ute. This is her car in the aftermath in the centre of the road on an unusual angle. We still don't know who owns that ute or why Allen hit it with such force. But by Wednesday, a video had surfaced. Person's car, Gary Allen's car, my car. In front of my car was parked here at this line and my car has been moved forward almost a full car parking spot forward by getting bashed when it was parked with the handbrake up. The Prime Minister initially saying that he received conflicting reports about the circumstances. The problem is I couldn't speak to her directly last night, but there was some suggestion that she may have said that she wasn't driving. Now, of course, I couldn't verify any of that because I couldn't speak to her. But we now know that Alan was behind the wheel, distressed, and she had been drinking. That excess breath alcohol level was only at an infringement level. But traffic law experts say it's probably why police have charged Alan with careless driving. A second charge, though, is harder to explain. It's for failing to follow a police officer, and around that, mystery remains. By Thursday, staff is reporting that Kitty Allen was found 500 metres from the crash, and police confirmed that a dog unit was used, but it's understood it wasn't to find the minister, rather it was to link her back to the car as evidence. And by now, the Prime Minister is refusing to comment any further, but... He did say this when asked whether he would have Kitty Allen back into Cabinet. Do people not get second chances, especially when it comes to mental health? Um, yes, yes, they do, but also um, where there's other issues involved, including you know, potential criminal offending, that has a bearing too. The charges that Allen is facing are fines and infringements only, but Allen released a statement soon after saying that she is leaving politics, apologising to the Prime Minister for undermining him and the trust placed in her to do an important job for New Zealand. Saying too to her colleagues, supporters and constituents on the East Coast that she is full of anger with herself for letting them down. And there has been an outpouring of support for Kitty Allen and compassion for her personally in the aftermath too. We've got someone who's she's, she's sick, our girl, and uh, I just, it's just, this is just heartbreaking stuff, yeah, you know. Uh, I, we tried, a, num a number of us tried very hard with her. And there have been questions too over how it all came to this, and here is how the PM described the crisis engulfing his minister and his government. I made sure that she had got support, that she had been seeing a counsellor. Um, she came to meet with me. Um, she indicated that she wanted to come back to work. Um, I did not compel her to stay away from work. There were so many red flags with this minister, from the RNZ comments uh, through to the allegations around shouting and management in her office, um, to even the last time you put her on leave, to resisting going on leave and, and saying that wasn't for mental health reasons. There are a lot of red flags in this process. So how did she continue to be brought back? Kitty Allen was very well supported through all of those things. Now, I I do want to be clear um, that the issues around um, concerns around her ministerial conduct, her, you know, previous issues around her ministerial conduct um, were unrelated to her mental health, and she has been very clear about that and does not want those two issues to be conflated. But they, they were, as I've indicated before, dealt with at the time, um, and uh, there were no new issues that were raised in terms of you know further complaints for me to do anything further with. Um, having said all of that, mental health is a very difficult area, and I think the experiences of the last you know, few weeks um, clearly demonstrate that. So how did you expect Kitty Allen to walk back into this place, which we all know is pressurised and is brutal, and to deal with her mental health issues alongside the pressure of being a minister? 
As I've indicated, uh, Kitty was being very well supported. How was um, she being well supported? She had some, some very good support from colleagues. We had arranged professional support for her. And one of the conditions of her coming back to work was that she would continue with that professional support and that she would also be receiving coaching. Um, so that was, a, that was a condition that was placed on her coming back to work. But you know now that it wasn't enough, don't you? Well, clearly, there were some further issues. Is there a way to manage that more thoughtfully in retrospect in terms of allowing her the space and, you know, to, to work through those mental health issues without the pressure of this place? As I've indicated, Kitty was very passionate about coming back to work. And actually, people who are working through these issues, in some cases, that's actually a significant step in their recovery, is to re-engage with the positive things in their life. And for Kitty, being at work was a very positive part of her, her life. Um, she had been receiving support. She was in a much better space. Um, had I been able to foresee this, of course, there would have been more things that you know we might have been able to do. I don't have a crystal ball any more than anyone else does. But Prime Minister, some New Zealanders, voters looking at uh, your Prime Ministership and at this government m may see a connection with Stuart Nash was given multiple chances despite there being red flags about his behaviour. You then have Michael Wood, multiple chances despite multiple red flags. Now we have Kitty Allen in a different but similar situation where there were red flags and we've now lost her as a minister too. So what does that and say about your political management? In every one of those instances I've made decisions based on the information that was available at the time. Uh, obviously if more information comes to light then I'll revise my decisions. I like to think that I make decisions based on information and evidence uh, I make those decisions fairly, I believe. Um, in all of those instances, further things happened. Do you need to be tougher? I, I believe that I have been quite tough. Um, clearly, if I'd had all of the information related to all of those ministers in the first instance, um, the issue would have been resolved much quicker than it was. But I didn't have that information. As Prime Minister, you can only make decisions based on the information that you have at the time. Prime Minister, many New Zealanders might be thinking, well, today is the day that you lost the election campaign. That's very premature. The campaign hasn't even started yet.